So on New York Groove, um, I, I've always said that I like to do different kind of interviews, not just focus on sports necessarily, focus on stuff that really interests me. Because, you know, you get my kind of vibe on the show. We had Emily Kaplan on a few weeks ago talking about NHL stuff. And this week, I think, you know, I'm 24 years old, and I think our entire lives of young kids, right, we spent a lot of time on YouTube, right? Mm -hmm. uh, I'm, I'm, and a lot of the last year for me, has been spent on YouTube on a channel called The Reptile Zoo. I'm very fascinated by, by animals that terrify me. So, and I'm being joined now by Juliet Brewer, whose father started The Reptile Zoo, right? And, mm -hmm. and now you're one of the main, uh, what, zoologists would you call yourself at The Reptile uh, Zoo? No, I wouldn't call myself a zoologist, for what sure. What would you call yourself? Just like reptile handler. Nothing reptile more. handler enthusiast excited about it <laughs> so so here's the thing about reptiles okay i'm terrified of them i really am like uh, i've never handled them in my life I i'm a dog i have a dog at home i have a couple fish in a fish tank that's about my expertise <laughs> that um, feels normal <laughs> you you uh i see on the channel are very good at dealing with the, the monitor lizards for sure mm -hmm. um Those crocodiles are... which is Al crazy alligators. alligators right alligators yeah <laughs> and and snakes um, the first thing I want to ask you about is about snakes. How did you make dealing with snakes and all these dangerous animals in your life so normal? Um, it's what I know. It's my normal. I'm way more familiar with all this stuff uh, than I am with dogs and cats. So again, I'm 30 years old. I've literally been around um, reptiles my whole entire life since like infancy. So it's normal. It's the most normalized thing I was raised of like, Oh, it's weird that you don't know how to interact with 20 foot pythons at five years old. That's so bizarre. So, so that's you, how it is. So you grew up in your house, like with, with just snake cages around and like, is that no. what your house grew up with? Like, no. Um, so we have my whole existence. Um, we have had some form of what is here now. I'm um, just okay. a little bit. So now we have a zoo, so it's just more organized, but we've always bred reticulated pythons, which are those huge snakes that you see. Uh -huh. um, We've always had a little bit larger animals. It's what my dad is stoked about. So um, I was always raised with large tortoises, large snakes, big monitors. Um, we would have one that would like walk around the shop and stuff. So um, it's what I know. It's probably the easiest way to put it. So <laughs> growing up, so growing up in school, uh, when you had like friends and stuff that you would bring over, like like when you're when you got a friend that has like a golden retriever that they're taking for a while, like how different? Like were you able to bring friends around these animals and stuff and like like show them that yeah. hey, I've got a, this is my pet uh, reticulated python, George. Is that how it worked for you? Like that's just yeah. it's so fascinating to me. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I mean, yeah. Um, also, my friends they knew that that was something that we did, so it wasn't. Uh -huh. Like, oh, my dad kind of does this on the side. It's like a full throttle business. Um, and there's not a lot of um, reptile people in our community, especially of what we have. Mm -hmm. So, and it was right next to my school. So people, they knew about it. It was just, again, it was normal. We were like, cool, weirdo. <laughs> weirdo. <laughs> so, um, yeah. When it comes to all these dealing with these dangerous animals and stuff, uh, I feel like what you guys you guys tend to mention on your on your episodes a lot. I guess I'll call them episodes on like Facebook and YouTube and stuff. Yeah. What you guys tend to mention a lot is uh, at least your dad definitely does is these guys are not pets. Like yeah. to, you don't want to be the, the the crazy guy in Florida that has the the, the python mm -hmm. in his in his basement because mm -hmm. you do see those stories and stuff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But what's the biggest misconception about these kinds of animals? Is it that they can be pets for people, or is it that they're not as dangerous as people think they are? What's the the line? There? Um. I would say the biggest misconception is that there are these like wild, exotic, psychotic animals where like to put it plainly, my monitor lizard does the same things to me that everybody's cat in their home that they sleep in does to them. Mm -hmm. They claw them in the face, they accident or on purpose, bite them in the arm. Like mine's just a monitor lizard. Like um, it's just knowing their personalities. There's never been anything in culture as like you should love scaly stuff or bigger monitors or lizards or anything um where so much of our heart is like no they're really sweet you just have to know their personality um and it makes you understand so that's why we like to like educate a ton is because through the education comes understanding and you're like oh not that bad not that bad <laughs> granted it does i uh, don't think i make it look that easy but it is a lot of work it is a relationship so mm -hmm. um you don't just like go like pick up a monitor and you're like cool like 
I've been doing that a good amount of my life. So I know how to do it. I know what the next five steps are, things like that. But I'd easily say the biggest misconception is just that there's this like psychoticness to them because nobody understands them. What I'm amazed by that is um, from what I see on the videos, you, you basically essentially raised the uh, the albino al alligator you guys have in um, well, coconuts, the name of the alligator, right? Coconut. Yeah, yeah, coconut. Yes. You've essentially raised that alligator, and it's crazy that you've seen the growth of this gator obviously get much, much, much bigger. But yeah. from the time this thing was a baby, you, you've raised it, and when you when you handle it now, the, the gator seems to be, like, perfectly normal with you, as if you're handling a puppy. But that gator can still uh, essentially <laughs> take your arm off if it wanted to at any moment, yeah. right? Yeah. So, like, you kind of got to, like, I guess you got to, like, develop that relationship, right, where you, you got to always be on your toes. Yeah, so it's a little bit more complex than that. So we've had her for about a year or so, um, and she has grown an exponential amount mm -hmm. during that year. Um, my favorite thing to do is feed animals, and I really enjoy doing it. So I actually got in trouble for feeding her too much. <laughs> um, so we've slowed down her feeding, but um, she is crazy. So when we initially got her, she was like wild. Um, so through that, we don't necessarily call it training. It's more socialization because they do, um, the way you, you make them nice is you just hold them and you just kind of absorb what they have to give you. Um, and for her, that was like, she's extremely strong. She's different than our other alligators. I don't, our other alligators were rescues. So they were, um, <coughs> excuse me, yeah. a little bit malnutrition or something like that, where she was not malnutrition. This girl like still comes with like such a pack. Um, but the way that we kind of figured it out is, which I love is my, also my favorite thing to do is just like, as you're interacting with them, you just have to continually interacting with them and not be so scared and nervous. Um, cause she a hundred percent, like she bit my dad, like the top of my dad's finger off the first time that we oh, had geez. her. Um, which like, he was a little dramatic about that. Not going to lie. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, um, uh, like through that, like the way that I deal with it is I am going in, I'm choosing to go in. She has the potential to bite me, mm -hmm. but I am now knowing that. And I'm working out of that confidence that she wants to, that's like wants to, but like she has the capacity to get confused in between. Oh, I'm so sorry. I thought I was eating versus like, no, this is, we're going to do some socialization time. Um, so with that, I go in very slowly. I know how she wants to be touched. So I usually will grab the base of her tail and she'll, if she goes really fast back and forth, that means I'm like, nah, you're gonna have to get me in a different position. So I let her get comfortable. And then I just, you have to just be, so there's like such a false confidence to working with animal, animals, because so much of it is just their response to you moving them. And if they don't feel secure, they're gonna respond because their whole job is to stay safe. They're instinctual, through instinctions, they're like, what do I have to do? This person's coming and grabbing me versus like, oh, okay. I feel supported. I feel okay. I don't feel threatened. I must be fine. So I work very hard to make sure every time, whether I know she's going to be psychotic or not, that she does not feel threatened, that she doesn't feel like I'm coming to like rip her out of her enclosure, that it's literally like, oh, cool, here we go. So, um, and once that like weight of the water is gone, that's where she starts to move a little bit. But again, I've already in my mind process. I know what's going to happen. I know she's going to kind of, so I tighten up a little bit they're extremely extremely strong animals mm -hmm. so i just hold it really hard and that lets her move around just as much as she needs so she still feels very in control but she has zero control of the situation <laughs> um which hopefully is a good response for me as a handler that i am able to take care of that correctly and mm -hmm. um the amount of strength she gives me i can absorb it and not um, make her feel any type of is issues with that which is nice because that's why she's nice she understands it uh -huh. She recognizes it. She responds well to it. And if she does it, we'll let her chill for a little bit. And we'll come back because she's I'm dramatic. She's allowed to be dramatic. So we'll give her her moments to be dramatic. <laughs> um, and then we'll circle back around. Basically, Juliet yeah. Brewer from the Reptile Zoo is joining us. Uh, they, you guys have one point six million Instagram followers, which is pretty, yeah. pretty freaking crazy. Um, yeah. The video that seems to come up a, a lot of the time that I see is the video <clears throat> of you feeding your other giant gator, Darth Gator. <laughs> Where I believe you're feeding him chicken and he yeah. essentially jumps out of the enclosure. Mm -hmm. uh, is that the most dangerous, terrifying thing that's happened on this job for you? Or is there something else no. that you could disclose? <laughs> because I'm sure there's some crazy stories that you've got. No, and it's okay. And it's actually not that dangerous because so these lizard or no, not lizard. This guy as he jumps out, 
So for alligators, they have a high momentum. So they're built to be in the water, to jump out into the land. They're not designed to get anything on the land. So whenever you see videos of them in the wild or in um, different areas, they'll like do this like mad dash of like, Wah! and then you literally see them go, Ugh. and then they like <laughs> turn back around and go to the water because they're out of their territory. So the second that that guy lands on the ground, very smoothly, if you look at the video, he literally like rolls out like a, yeah. I don't know what, um, but um, then he's like, oh man, I didn't mean to do that. <laughs> and he doesn't move. Like he doesn't, he'll, uh, they don't go forward and backwards. They go side to side. Uh -huh. So if I was sitting next to him, yeah, hundred percent. That's not, but again, I know what's going on. It may not look like I'm, I know what's going on, but I promise <laughs> you, I, I get a lot of, a lot of slack from that video, which I feel fine about. I, I feel fine about it, but um forward and backwards they don't do very well but side to side they do uh -huh. um, i was perfectly safe there was literally zero issues with that um he sat on the floor for the next hour until my dad was able to come it was like 10 p.m at night so um, <laughs> i like called my dad i was like hey i'm s it's a lot of work putting him back in i can imagine uh, yeah hey i'm so sorry like darth jumped out and he's like no i don't want to go in and i was like yeah, he's two or three beers deep by that point it's like, <laughs> there's no desire to come do this <laughs> he's like he, yeah so um yeah but i mean yes that is the video that i get so what other danger what other dangerous like cl like close countered stuff has happened to you and with these animals and stuff? i'm sure there's there's stuff like you have any fingers missing no. Oh, good. No, no pieces yep. of fingers missing. No hands yep. missing. No. Wow. No. I, it's yep. crazy to me. Like I just, I feel like if I was put in these situations, I mean, of course, I've never dealt with these animals before, but it's just, it's the the calmness that you guys show when dealing with these. What fascinates me is I've learned from your videos is uh, when you feed them the chicken, right? As you're always going from like the side of their mouth, but the chomp, mm -hmm. the noise that that makes is like if you have your it's hand in beautiful. there, it's crazy yeah. to me. Yeah. Um, so is that the is that the case like with you guys is like is like when you're when you're touching their heads and stuff just don't go near the side because then, then they're gonna get you is that, um, is that the case i mean i just I, it's fascinating to me totally a little bit but also when doing that we normally will do it at the end um because they're like i'm so tired like we're again they're big animals they're moving around a lot mm -hmm. even just in that motion of going up and down to getting the chicken um which we also sometimes do that because it's good enrichment in the wild, like I was saying, they got to dart out. That's a lot of energy for them. It's healthy. I mean, if I just sat on my couch all day and then ate, like I'm going to get chunky. I'm going to have zero muscle tone. So mm -hmm. that actually is like a form of enrichment of making them move around and stuff like that. Um, but when touching them on the nose, um, that is usually, again, they're like, I'm done. Like I'm literally, most of the times when they do that, you'll see them kind of like go back. It's because they're literally like, yeah, I'm going to retreat. I'm good. I got all the chicken I want. <laughs> and that's kind of a, yeah. But that's always really fun to do because we're like, oh, cute little have, dog. Have you, little have you dealt with uh, venomous snakes? Do you guys have them in your enclosures there? Um, we do. My dad has. I do not. I do not work with venomous. I'm not going to pretend like I know what venomous okay. is. Um, I do know how to interact with them simply because I am high up in management here. So I do need to know if yeah, he's yeah. not or other, if Tim or other person is not here. I have the keys. I need to make sure that everything's going on. That's well, but that is as far I will. I have interacted with them literally once in my probably 15 years of working here. And so, I don't, I don't desire to do anymore. There is a guy online who, um, he, he's been injecting himself with snake venom for, for three decades now. <laughs> do you know what I'm talking about? You seem like you, like you've. No, not specifically, but I just more of, it's just great. It well, sounds like. It sounds honestly, I just uh, it sounds like Dwight from The Office. <laughs> <laughs> well, he this guy he's like made a, almost a career out of it, where he does he does this for a purpose. Like he trains his body to to, to learn in like it's smaller yeah. doses, and then he gets bigger and bigger and bigger, mm -hmm. and then he finds the actual snake and lets it bite him to see how his body will react to the venom. It's yeah. like, this is a thing to me where like, so one of the places that I, I, I've, i we debated on the show many times of going to, oh. we have, you know, our, our, our producer, our co-host, everything is Australia, right? So have you been to Australia before? I have, I love and, it. And you probably, I'm assuming as an animal person, you love Australia. So incredible. I really want to go to Australia, but I'm also mm -hmm. terrified to go to Australia because yeah. I just heard it's like everything that can kill you is there. Yeah, basically, they're in New Zealand, hundred percent. 
feeling. <laughs> my friend told me a story when he went to Australia to study abroad where, where uh, he was in the bathroom when he first got there and he looked up at the ceiling and there was a spider on the ceiling that was like the size of his hand. And he's like, <laughs> if this thing jumps down towards me, I'm just, I'm done. It is what it is. I, so how is how is Australia, if I can ask you then? Like, how, what is the vibe around there? Because I'm assuming you went for an for animal purposes, right? Yes, yes. So I went to, like, the bush. So I went to Darwin, which is the most northwest part of Australia, if I'm looking at it correctly. Um, mm -hmm. north, so, like, Sydney's over here. Darwin's over here. Okay. So um, it is, like, the bush. I loved it. We went and hung out with Matt Wright, um, and we got to – he's um, – does a ton of um, conservation with crocodilians there and stuff like that. Um, it was incredible. Like, I wanted to move there. Like, actually try to take steps forward to move there. Um, if that kind of puts it in perspective. It's, they were my people. They're incredible. The people are beautiful. Just like the nicest, kindliest, friendliest. But will also like cuss you out in three milliseconds if you make a wrong turn. Which I love. Not gonna uh -huh. lie. I, I love that people, they're like, this is how it is, man. We're like, you know what? I needed that. Thank you. <laughs> um, and then um, their animals are gorgeous. They have crocodiles. So crocodiles, the difference between alligators and crocodiles, they call our alligator or like American alligators, dumpy frogs with teeth. So frog, dumpy frogs are like this big, chunky green frog. Uh -huh. They call, And I'm like, oh, because I knew they called it that. I was like, oh, interesting. Like, I mean, our gators are like, not wildly intense or dangerous, but the difference between alligators and crocodiles, crocodiles legitimately want to eat you. <laughs> like, oh, it's that bad. It's so bad. Like, so bad. Um, they're wild. They're crazy. Because they got the, the so I, like, I've seen these videos, right? So they got, they have the giant, uh, the, the, they have the 20 foot anaconda or t pythons out there, that the, the snakes that are, the reticulated snakes are out there. The, um, the poisonous snakes are definitely everywhere over there. Venomous snakes, they're, that they have the, the crazy size spiders, right? That are the size of your hand. Mm -hmm. Um, they've probably got scorpions somewhere out there. Um, the crocodiles are, are now I'm hearing are, are insane. They're not like the alligators where you can, they will right? drag you and they want to drag you. And, and then like, I've seen videos on said by like the duck bill of your hat, they will take you in. <laughs> and then I've seen videos cool. online of of the kangaroos that are like jacked out of their <laughs> mind that'll have fist fights with you. Yeah. I, this to me, as a guy that doesn't know how to deal with animals, is not appealing. And I want to see Australia. I feel like to go to Australia, I'd have to. I'd only be confident going if I were going with like someone like you, who's like, like knows what they're doing. Like if if we if we are walking in the road and we approach a black mamba, you'll know how to get us out of that situation. Where I okay. would just freak out. No offense. Uh -huh. Do you want to go to the bush of Australia, or do you want to go to like Sydney, Australia? Well, no, because if I if I go somewhere, <laughs> I want to I want to see like. Nowhere. <laughs> when I went to Canada two years ago, right? I went like like 190 miles north of Toronto to like the Arctic. I, like, oh. When I see that country, I want to see your country. I don't just want to go to your main city. I want to see like, I like you know, okay. I want to go to your dive bars. I want to go to your yeah. to your your wetlands and like your crazy yeah. stuff. Okay. Know that their 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 dive bars all have enclosures with crocodiles in the back. What? I'm not joking. Every single place that we went to, where they're like, hey, Matt, uh, we went, like I said, with Matt Wright. He uh -huh. was like, hey, let's go over here. My friend's place got a bar over here. And first, he would introduce us to their crocodiles in the back, and we make a couple like fun interaction videos. Oh, yeah, great. <laughs> we would go have lunch in his bar, and we're like, okay. <laughs> Great. I, lo I love this. I love this. <laughs> I'm sure for you, you love that. But for me, you yeah. can understand it. it would terrify me. I'm from New York City. So like, I grow, the, the scariest thing around me is a squirrel. So I don't, yeah. I don't know what dangerous animals are. Like, oh, my yeah. God. This just seems... Yeah. Australia, I don't know. I'm going I'm to have to have a lot of confidence one day to get there. It's really, it's sad because I really want to get there. But, like, there's just so much about it that just terrifies me. Maybe just don't go straight into, like, the hardcore. Work your way up. Go Work for two weeks. Start in Sydney, Australia. Go look at the animals in the beautiful zoos. Like, go do your deal. And then if someone, you're talking to someone and they give you an opportunity to go a little bit deeper in, go a little deeper in. But yeah, I agree. Probably don't go full throttle first time. I don't know so, if you're fully ready for that. I don't think I am either. <laughs> um, just a few more here out of you, out of you Juliet. Um, Juliet Brewer from the, the Reptile Zoo is joining us. Um, I see uh, your, your dad likes to deal with the giant animals, right? Like the really big snakes and the really big he like, loves, lizards. He loves the big, the big pythons. That's okay, it. so I've seen yeah. conflicting reports online that I keep looking into. Uh, obviously, I think okay. everyone's fascinated in these big animals, and I want to get yeah. Nat Geo uh, reports that 
the green anaconda is the largest uh, like snake that that's out there that they've actually found, and they claim that they found one that that can they, they normal ones go from twenty to thirty feet. Is that accurate so far? Um, I don't believe they found a thirty foot anaconda. Interesting, because they claim the Wait. largest one they've ever found is forty feet. I'm not going to go against Nat Geo here, um, but I would say if it's not photos, that is a very, very large animal. Um, I want to say, I did hear my dad say the other day, I do apologize, I don't remember, I think it was the largest reticulated python. Mm -hmm. So retics get the longest, Burmese pythons and anacondas get the heaviest, um, okay. where the anaconda, um, depending on the, literally like genetics of it, um, can get a little longer than the Burmese, like female Burmese pythons. Uh -huh. um, but reticulated pythons are the longest ones. Like the, that's their claim to fame. Um, and I think the largest recorded one is 29 feet. Oh my so God. I don't know. But again, I'm not, I am not about to go up against Nat Geo. So, um, but I would say like, I am just, I just in Fountain Valley, cute little small Orange County area. I'm not about it. <laughs> I see the crazy stories. Um, they found, they found this one supposedly in Brazil. In like the Amazon and Brazil and stuff where you've right. got, you know, jungles and these things are eating like, I don't know, jaguars for, for lunch. Yeah. I guess. So the yeah. movie, so then you would say the movie Anaconda. Have you seen that movie, the, the 1999 um, classic? Um, I have not, but oh. I know that that's not. That's not accurate, right? Wildly out of proportion. <laughs> it's not accurate, okay. Wildly, wildly. Yeah. Do you have all three of the largest snakes in, in your captivity there? Of course we do. So you have all. So you you regularly feed these guys. Yeah, yeah. Oh, not me as a human. No, oh. but yes, we have them. Um, we breed the reticulated pythons, um, and then the Burmese pythons we use for birthday parties. Um, for and birthday then parties, for like, birthday it's parties. incredible to me. Like just for birthday parties, um, like it's wild. Uh, and then we have the green anacondas. So the green and yellow anacondas, which are not used for anything, they are mean. So. <laughs> Um, but yeah, but all the large snakes that you like see in my dad's account, J prehistoric pets, uh -huh. um, those are all reticulated pythons so, and and then, uh, from an egg done the whole process with, so they're pretty socialized. They're nice animals. A lot of them, cause we interact with all of the animals throughout their whole life. Um, a lot of them are very tame. Um, retics aren't always known for being, um, they, they tame down, but they do have like a, um, they, they've got a little bit of a dominant situation for sure that they act out of. Mm -hmm. Um, but we've got some really sweet ones. So the, the, this, the, your, your, your life, your story, your career re really fascinates me. It does like <laughs> as, as a guy who's not familiar with these crazy, like the, the most experience I have is like the Bronx zoo where I yeah. just go, you know, <laughs> see all, it's a great zoo. Yeah. And, and they do have an insane, uh, they're the reptile, uh, it's uh cool. there was a story actually a few years ago, um, where a, a venomous snake got out of there. Oh really? Yeah, yeah. It was. A, I remember it. I think because then I was I was in like middle school or high school when this happened, and then there were rumors that like because I I live a, I live in Staten Island, which is a suburb of the Bronx. It's yeah. not close to the Bronx though. Yeah. So yeah. you get people saying, "Oh, this snake's gonna find its way into uh into Staten Island." Someone made up a rumor that that it, it bit an elephant and killed an elephant in the zoo. Like oh there was God. a whole bunch of yeah. crazy yeah. rumors that came out of this. But I know that their reptile enclosure is like one of the top ones in the country, and actually. Yeah. The Staten Island Zoo, where I'm, this brings up for me, where I'm from, we have a zoo in Staten Island. We actually have one of the largest reptile enclosures, too, in, 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 in like the country, which I, you would never think Staten Island has that, but it's a, one last question. Um, maybe a little personal, but, but okay. I'm sorry, I'm sorry if it is. How does this work in your dating life? When you, when you go out to dinner with a guy or for drinks, like, do you mention immediately, yeah, you know, I, I work with uh, 20 foot crocodile uh, alligators on a regular, like, do you bring them to the, to the reptile zoo afterwards just to show them around, you know? <laughs> that's just wild to me. Um, it makes it interesting, that's for <laughs> sure. Um, bummer that people just in general, they'll like be talking with me on apps or whatever, which is uh -huh. the worst thing ever. And they'll ask like, oh, what do you do? And I usually just say I manage a zoo. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not forward in it at all. There's a lot about me. That I'm like kind of intense, like not gonna lie, like kind of intense. So I just let them kind of stumble upon it. And then they're like, oh, cool. What kind of animals do you work with? And I go, oh, I work with like alligators and stuffy purples. And then they're like, oh my God, I recognize you. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah, that that's me. Cool. Yeah. That is just incredible. <laughs> like. Yeah, yeah, I, well, I, I, I'm trying to think Both of... guys are very intimidated by it. And are I would be. I would be. Yeah. I, I would be I would be both a little a little intimidated by it, and I'd also be like, like, 
damn. Like, like she works with, like, I want to <laughs> tell my friends about that. Like, like she, she works with alligators. That's incredible. Like, it, the whole thing is just, I, I guess it's more for me that, like, because I've not been around these animals and I've just, the only uh, interaction I have with these guys is, like, going to Florida and the Everglades and holding the baby ones for, like, 10 seconds <laughs> when you take a picture, which That's is still pretty cool. Yeah. But to, to be living your entire life from as a child being familiar yeah. with these, as much it's as they weird. are dogs and cats <laughs> to us. Now, it's weird, but it's, but it's, it's, it's pretty freaking cool. I got to ask. Julia Brewer from, uh, I guess she, uh, an, a reptile handler you consider yourself, right? I call it a reptile handler. I reptiler. Don't have in it, so I'm, I'm lowballing that one. Reptile. reptile handler from the Reptile Zoo in Fountain Valley, California. You can check them out online all over social media at the Reptile Zoo. Check them out in person. You can go on tours there and stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, Juliet, thanks so much for your time. I really appreciate yes, it. Yes, of course. Thanks for having me.